You're watching free weekly tutorials by Joni Young. It's Merlot Van Gogh night. We're painting Starry Night by Van Gogh. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joni Young and tonight we're painting Van Gogh Starry Night. I'm calling this Merlot Van Gogh night. Kind of a painting party, so I hope you guys will join me. Now pause this video and go pour yourself a glass of wine. Um, let's just get right into the materials we're using and I'm gonna post them, the full list in the description below. Here are a few of the colors that we're gonna be using. Neon yellow, turquoise, dioxazine purple, ultramarine blue, some neon pink, and of course some titanium white. Now there will be a few other colors that we're going to be using. Um, I might add some neon orange. I'm just going to do my interpretation of Starry Night which will be a lot more colorful than others that you've probably seen. Um, you guys know that I like to use color. So I'm really excited about this. Thanks for joining you guys and let's get started. So let's begin with pink and our filbert brush. A little bit of white. Let's mix the two together. And let's start twisting our brush around, creating little soft circles for our stars. So pushing and twisting. Now you can use a little bit of water here if you need to. And the largest one is going to be right here. And there's one more there. Softly blend that in. And then I'm going to wash my brush off. Switching over to a round brush. I think it's a number five. Mixing white and neon yellow together. Rolling my brush around and getting most of the paint on the tip. I'm going to start dabbing little lines, short little lines in the center and around the edge of the pink. Now the ratio for this should be more white to yellow. and a little crescent moon right there. And I used a little bit more yellow just for that moon. And then I went back to white. And there's a few more down here, so I'm going to begin these, again using yellow and white. I don't want these ones on the bottom to have um, as much pink in them. Now I'm carefully going to outline the moon in hot pink. and dab each of them with some more yellow. Now we're gonna start the clouds that are sweeping across the sky. So it's a big swirl that comes down from the left and up and over into another little swirl. 
Now I'm doing longer strokes first for this just to get the basic shape. And then I'm going to come in with the blue and white after and a little bit of purple and do shorter little strokes. I'm just sort of laying it all out right now and then I'll come in with more color later and use smaller brushes. And then there's another cloud that's right behind the mountains that will be at the bottom. And it starts on the right side, just underneath that moon. Okay, now with a clean brush, we're taking some ultramarine blue and titanium white. Small little dabs around each one of those stars. Now it's okay if you go over part of your yellow and even part of the pink. So we'll just create some more colors like light green with the yellow and blue and then the blue with the pink will make a light lavender color. So this process takes a really long time. I've sped it up because it would have been three or four hours long. Um, so make sure you have a lot of patience for this. So this is only a 9x12 canvas and it took quite a while. Um, I'm actually planning, because I like this one so much, I'm planning to do a much larger one to hang in my house. Um, so I don't know how, how long that one's going to take, but I am looking forward to painting this one again. So I'm just going to cut in around and in between these stars with more ultramarine blue. No water for this. You can use whatever brush you want. Um, you can use a smaller one if you feel more comfortable. I like the round one for this because of the pointy end that it has. And now I've got a little bit of white just softening around the blue closest to the stars. And I'm just going to blend that in right up to the yellow. And I'll start coming in with a little bit more white and less blue this time. Then I'll work my way up to a little bit more blue. It's okay to go over part of the yellow. I'm going to cut in with some ultramarine blue here with no white at all for the darkest parts of my sky. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white and pull some of that into the swirl. So this is a um, more challenging uh, painting to work on. If you're feeling overwhelmed or intimidated at all, just keep painting. Keep going for it. Working on it a little bit at a time. One paint stroke at a time. If you need to stop the video in between and pause, go ahead. Pour yourself another glass of wine if you need it. It's always, I find, mid-painting that you come to kind of a point where you're like this looks horrible I need to throw this out and start over again but that's completely normal it always looks kind of weird halfway you just have to trust and keep going and I promise you at the end of it it'll be well worth it and it will look exactly how you wanted it to if not better just don't give up So now I'm adding a little bit of the purple. No water on my brush. So 
So we've got liner brush, white, and ultramarine blue again. We're going to be starting to add in a few more little dabs and lines around those stars. And we're painting wet on wet, so we're going to be picking up a little bit of the darker blue and the purple. You're going to have to reapply or reload your brush quite often for this. Okay, so I'm just taking my time and going around in the same sort of pattern around every star. So short little lines. And they all sort of blend into one another so you don't really know where they start and where they finish. I'm going to define this moon a little bit more by using a little bit of the blue and white. And then I'm going to come in with my filbert, neon yellow and white, and add some highlights. Now more yellow this time than white. And let's not forget about those ones. And there's another little star that I just about forgot right there. Continue to add a little bit of that yellow in a few lines and, and brush strokes down on the bottom. And then along this cloud right above the mountain with a small clean filbert and more blue. I'll begin adding some more darker little lines around each star. We need a little bit more contrast in this area, so I'm going to add some more here as well. Now I've got a clean filbert with turquoise. And I'm carefully adding some of those lines on part of the yellow and over the blue. And then with a little bit of white, just to soften it up, because I know it's going to dry darker. And I'm going to bring some down here as well, a few little lines with the turquoise. And then again with some blue. With a clean brush and more white. I'm going to soften around each star. Now I'm building up the contrast on this big swirl here by mixing blue and white. And then I've got a clean, tiny filbert and dioxazine purple only for more really dark areas. I'm gradually adding more of the ultramarine blue with purple still in my brush.
Now I'm taking some turquoise and I'm adding that to the clouds and around some of the stars. And I'm going to do faint little lines down here on the bottom cloud and then take a fan brush and create a neat little pattern in the sky with that. I like to play around with different brushes and see which one works best for this technique. So if you've got a larger area like the big star on the right, I found the fan brush to work well there, but not so well around the smaller areas of stars. So I'd recommend using a small liner brush for those. Okay, now I'm just going to add a little bit more hot pink. Little circles and outlining that crescent moon. And then a few little dabs and lines down below using yellow and purple. These are going to be the little buildings and, and houses in the village below. So all it is is just painting little rectangles and squares that are slightly misshapen. And then using turquoise, I'm going to go around and below and over part of them, mixing the two colors together. Then some white for the roof line. And for the church steeple. So it's just more about shapes right now for painting these houses rather than um, worrying about too much detail for every single little house and window and rooftop. You don't want to get too carried away in all of that, otherwise you lose the, the loose, abstract, flowy feeling of this painting. And I've got yellow and purple. So my fan brush, I made sure I got it really wet so that those bristles separate and you get those little um, spaces in between. And then I've got purple on the tip. I lined it up and pulled down and you get that neat striped pattern. I'm going to go ahead and add some white right there inside the steeple in between some of those lines on the rooftop. And adding some pink now, just a little bit. And then with a liner brush and more purple. I'm going to really define this area where I want it to be the darkest on the mountains. And some ultramarine blue and some purple down on the rest of the mountains, on the, starting on the left side, working our way over towards that church and then just past it. Now I've got a clean filbert with neon yellow and white. I'm going to re-highlight this cloud. Okay, so it's time to incorporate this blue in here. It's called True Blue. It's sort of like a phthalo blue but slightly different. And I'm just gonna lightly pull some in wherever I feel like I wanna add it. Remember, this is your own interpretation of Starry Night and you can do 
whatever you want with it. Now back to the liner brush and more turquoise. I think I need some more highlights showing through. There's a lot of dark going on up here and I need to balance that out. I want to see that pattern a little bit more that this painting and Van Gogh's style is uh, really famous and well known for. So as the paint is drying, I'm noticing where I need to re-highlight. So I just keep going back for a little bit more either yellow and white or turquoise and white or blue and white. Okay, let's define these lines a little bit more. Adding some turquoise. And then a little bit of white and purple. You're going to need a few different size liner brushes unless you feel really comfortable using a small one, but I found going to the long liner brush a little bit easier. And now we've got a filbert and my favorite neon purple by Holbein. And let's just exaggerate the color a little bit more with hot pink. And a little bit of blending here. And that's just white and ultramarine blue. Very, very soft, barely touching the canvas at all. I don't want to lose that pattern. And I may have a little bit on that first cloud, so I see I'm going to have to go back and add some more little um, lines and pattern in there again. Okay, now my brush is clean. I've got more yellow and white. And I'm using my square brush, my flat brush, I mean, which is also another good brush with a nice uh, straight flat edge to do these little short lines with. It's fun to work with a, diff a bunch of different brushes and just experiment and see which one gets the best effect and which one you feel most comfortable using. Just want to go right in there carefully and sweep up some white inside of that church steeple. Okay, so now I'm taking that purple, yellow, and phthalo blue. And I'm going to mix it all up and try to make a very interesting dark green color. We're going to begin working on the tree now. Starting at the top, in between, and then around that star. Pull carefully using a round brush. And this tree has a lot of curve and swirls to it, just like the rest of the painting is got that flowy kind of vibe to it. The tree is just the same. And because I know it's going to dry darker, I've picked up extra neon yellow for this. So when it dries, it'll just look like a really, really dark green. And rather than opening up a bottle and pouring more paint out of that specific color, why not use what I have a lot left of on my palette?
So just scumbling some of that on the bottom. And then I'm going to just lightly give an indication of a pattern in here. So I'll do some loose lines that will show up better here in a few minutes. I'm going to come in with uh, a highlight. And again with more yellow. So we're just going to keep building up until we've got that nice contrast and flowy shape of this tree. You could also use um, your switch to your small liner brush to finish the tips of the tree branches off with but I find if you um, let off very lightly with a round brush you'll get the same effect because it's pointy and very narrow on the tip of it. Now with a clean round brush I'm just scumbling in and layering over with a little bit more ultramarine blue and even a little bit of phthalo blue here and there. You can add as much or as little as you like. Now with barely any paint left in my brush, I'm just going to dry brush softly blending in right behind these mountains. Pull in a little bit more of the ultramarine blue here and there. I'm going to outline that church steeple in purple. And redefine part of the tree. And a few more lines here and there down in the village. could really get lost in this kind of painting. It's kind of hypnotizing. It's really um, therapeutic and relaxing to paint. So now let's start picking up some pink and white, some yellow and white, can even mix up the pink, yellow, and white together and just give the indication that there's maybe some little lights on in the houses in the village. And then turquoise as well, peeking in behind that tree and in the mountain. Now there's a little line that goes across and right down underneath the steeple in the church. And under the roof line there. So I just use purple for that. Using a long liner brush and purple, I'm going to go in and create thicker lines in the tree and then wash my brush out, take more white and add more lines in the cloud swirl. And 
I'm just carefully outlining that moon in a little bit of white. You guessed it, more lines. As the painting progresses, I'm going to begin to add more and more white. To give everything more of a, a softer glow to it, you want to add a little bit more white around the stars. It'll mix in with the blue a little bit, so nothing's nothing in the painting is going to look really, really white. It sort of will at first as I'm adding it while it's wet, but then as it dries, it'll all just be a lighter shade of what I'm putting it over, so light blue or light purple light pink, light yellow, and turquoise. So keep in mind that we're not putting white over the entire painting. We're going to leave the dark areas where they should be, but we have, we kind of have to create that mid-tone so things gradually go from dark to light. I'm just adding a little little dash of hot pink here and around the tree. And then back to the white in the sky and around the stars. I think we're really starting to get somewhere in this painting now. It's been taking quite a while. But like I said, you kind of lose yourself while you're painting and you lose track of time and that's definitely what happened in this case. Now I've got a light green chartreuse green that I'm doing some highlights with down below and then switching over to my old toothbrush and a light dust of stars. You can barely see them. It's very subtle, but they're there. Now let's start bringing in some more blue. right behind the village on those mountains. And in between the lines. Okay, I'm just going to finish up with the last bit of blue lines in the cloud and add a little bit turquoise on the bottom right in behind that tree and then inside for a bit of a pattern. So this painting's all finished. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did having a glass of Merlot while painting Van Gogh. Please subscribe now like, share, and comment below. See you next time everyone. Happy painting!